today we've got this awesome leak amplifier from England and we're going to try to see if we can kick this up a notch and make it into a better amp than it is right now. Uh, so luckily these things are really easy to work on. They don't even have a bottom cover. This particular one, uh, this jack has cracked on it and so, uh, I'm sorry not jack, this is a fuse. The fuse has cracked on the uh, on here so that no longer fits. So I'm going to try to replace that. For some reason these guys are different colors that could just be uh, the way that the British do things. So always a little bit different than the rest of the world. Uh, this is missing its octal connector here on the front for providing power to the preamp and I also have the preamp but I can't power it because I don't have that uh, octal socket and so I grabbed a couple of sockets here and this one fits in the hole it's a little bit loose but the centers of these holes do not line up with the original hole centers here however this socket matched absolutely perfectly so I slide it right in and the holes uh, still line up the screw holes line up as you can sort of see there uh, and so we will definitely be using this uh, to put in the front of the amp there now this thing's already been reworked I can tell there's a bunch of cheap 5% uh, one watt resistors here from Radio Shack probably and so I'm going to go through and upgrade those to low noise metal resistors like this one I've already stuck in there uh, it's 5% also unfortunately but I already checked these to make sure that they were within a percent so we're good to go there uh, even though they, they are marked as 5% but you can always match them by hand so but these are these are much much better resistors so I'm going to go ahead and replace the rest of the 100Ks and there's two 70Ks I'd love to replace here, but um, these are cathode bias resistors and they're bypassed by capacitors, so they're not directly in the audio circuit, so to speak. However, these capacitors are pretty junky. Uh, just a tiny little uh, uh, electrolytic cap. So what I'm going to do is replace them with some really high quality uh, metal foil capacitors. Uh, and just pull that thing out of the circuit and stick these in there. And I'm, this is 63... Well, this is 47 microfarads and uh, this is 40 so I'm probably going to bolster it a little bit. I've got a 20 microfarad here. Uh, I'm going to see if what else I have to get a little closer to, to 50 but it won't hurt if it's 60 microfarads. Uh, it just hurts me because these are pretty expensive really nice capacitors. Uh, and we're going to replace four of those. These are bypassing the cathode bias. So we want to have some really good caps there. They've already got some decent caps here. These are probably original and these guys need to be bypassed as well these are just junky little things um, or not bypassed I'm pulling these out of the circuit these capacitors are only to uh, hold off like one volt maybe two volts and I've got some really nice uh, ceramic capacitors to stick in here instead which are incredibly small but they are definitely going to do better than what those are so that is the plan so we got several things to fix. The fuse, redo some of these guys. I've already put uh, new bypass caps over the original capacitors and the power supply. These ones were 22 microfarad, 350 volt on top of the original uh, 50 microfarad capacitor. And that's just to kind of add some more life to them. These original caps are actually not too bad, but these guys definitely should help uh, kick it up a notch give us a little bit better bass control and less noise less hum noise so that is most of the circuit there the tubes uh, don't match at all <laughs> this is just a, a set someone through together there's some soft techs, a Hungarian one a couple of GE's so it's a, it's a mishmash of tubes and uh, I'd like to maybe replace those at some point but maybe not today So far we've got a lot of nice high quality capacitors in here. Just notice these metal foil caps are plus minus 2%, so very tight tolerance. 40 microfarads, 20 microfarads, 60 microfarads, a little bit over the original 50, but that'll be fine. 
and we've got some good low noise metal caps uh, metal resistors in here uh, and it's looking good so next thing I'm going to do is try to get this jack installed uh, I'm still not sure why they took out the original one it's pretty convenient to have but I'm going to have to reinstall that which is not going to be so fun What a pain to get that thing back in. My advice, if you're thinking about taking it out, don't take it out. It's really hard to get that thing back in. Even with tweezers and, and uh, little needle nose pliers, it was quite a job getting that thing back in. I also noticed the rubber feet were squished more on the back than the front, so I did a tire change here. And uh, now we've got nice thick rubber on the back and the thinner rubber on the front. And I left this one loose so I can get a little more space to solder wires, and then I'll go ahead and tighten it up at the end. To replace the last two capacitors, I've got these tiny little multi-layer ceramics. These are actually 100 microfarad, 10 volts, but they'll be fine in place of the 50 microfarad guys way back here. And that way we get the electrolytics out. I hate electrolytics uh, for most of the circuits. These guys will last forever. These guys won't. And uh, these do much better at high frequencies. I literally had to dig through almost all of my stuff to find this fuse holder. This one's big enough that it won't slide in and out of the hole, which is good. This is a, just a really large fuse holder for some reason. So thankfully I've got a replacement. All my other ones were would slip right through the hole here and wouldn't stay in place, but this one will work. So I'm going to go ahead and replace that now. I'm going to point out that these outlets here that were provided on the amplifier are not actually hooked up. And that, I guess, was part of the modification that someone made in the past. Uh, but what was really interesting about this is these are American-style plugs, which is uh, just standard for American power outlets. But if you flip it on the top here, this transformer says on the top 200, 210 volts, 220, 230, and 240 or 250 volts. Right there, that indicates that this is the British version of the amplifier, which is why I can only get it to work at 220 volts. I actually had to run a step-up transformer to get this thing to turn on. Uh, and so, and so it's a mystery why you would put 230 volts AC in here and then have 115 volt outputs, 115 volt style outputs. Very strange. There's no 115 volt tap on this transformer, so I can't tap into it and generate 115 volts. So I'm not sure whether I should hook these up or not. I could hook them up and give you 230 volts AC on the switch, but someday someone's going to plug something into that, thinking it's 115, and they're going to get 230 and blow their stuff out. So we don't want to do that. So I think I'll probably just leave them disconnected and make that the disclaimer. But sure enough, this is the British version of the amp uh, and it does need 230 volts to turn on. So that is a pain. Still do have to finish wiring up this uh, octal input connector here. But everything else is in place. Look at all those beautiful caps. Wow, what a pain it was to get all these connections in here. Again, if you're thinking about pulling this out for some weird reason, don't pull it out. Leave it there. That thing isn't doing any harm, and it's really hard to cover up that hole anyway with this old gold-colored paint. You'll never find something that's equal to that. Man, what a pain to fix that. But I think we're all ready to go now. We're going to triple check these voltages and... Uh, connections before we hook anything up to the preamp. Just make sure we don't want to blow out anything in the preamp. So here we go. Here's the next step. <laughs> 